I'm going to talk about water governance and three challenges that water governance poses to, um, to policy analysis. So I am, by training, a political scientist. So we're going to start with normal politics that everybody knows. It's, it's about parliament, parliaments on different levels, governments. Um, it's about lawmaking, decision making on specific policy sectors. Um, and they, these are kind of the normal tools, the normal analytical tools that we use when we want to understand um, policy making and governance. Now, if you're dealing with water and, and natural resource governance more generally, but it's the water talk, so I'm going I'm to talk about water. Um, there's some challenges. There's some challenges, and we're somehow limited by these, um, by these usual uh, concepts and analytical tools that we're looking at that we use to look at policy making and the governance. And I'm going to focus on three of these challenges today, uh, tonight, and quickly explain them um, and propose some solutions on some, some new uh, ways to look at it. Um, these challenges are, are due to complexities, specific complexities of water and natural resource governance. The first one is that um, while normal policy making is usually, and, and the analysis thereof, is usually focused on a specific policy sector, water problems um, are broader and they concern many different sectors at the same time. Um, so we should look at overlapping sectors and how different issues in different sectors are actually connected. Second, um, we should look at structures of, of socio-ecological systems. We should not only study governance and the social system of governance, but we should actually look at how the ecological system that we are supposed to govern looks like. Um, so I'm going to quickly talk about that in, in a, as a second challenge. And third, um, I argue that we should also look at other types of institutions that the ones that don't, don't pop up in our minds immediately when, if we think about politics. And here I'm talking about policy forums, platforms, kind of more informal types of institutions where different actors come together and discuss a, a given issue. Um, so that's going to be the third challenge I'm going to talk about um, right now. So the first one, I'm, um, and, and yeah, you're going to see three networks. I like networks, that's kind of part of the research that I do. Um, I think they always look kind of fancy. So I used, I used networks to actually show you some of these complexities and, and some of the things that we might not see if we, if we focus on, specific, on, on, on traditional tools of, of policy making and traditional policy sectors, etc. So what you see here um, are different types of actors that deal with different issues and, and, and uh, related to water. Uh, for example, you have the red dots, these are state actors, you have the I don't, the blue dots are interest groups, etc. And they're scattered around. Some of these actors are dealing with one issue only. Um, you see at the, at the left side of, of, um, of your screen, I'm not sure if you can actually read it, but there's, so you have issues like um, water contamination, or, um, protection of water, etc. So these classical issues. But then as you see more towards the right side of, the, of, the, of, this, of this graph, you see issues like energy production, you see agriculture, tourism, and many different other sectors uh, actually interacting with, with water problems. It's probably not that interesting to actually look at the, the, these actors that are just dealing with one issue, but the interesting ones are these that are in the center of this network. The ones that are actually able to deal with different types of problems that are related to water and to make these connections between, uh, between, between different sectors. So, with regard to that challenge, um, first, the challenge itself is that water problems typically are not um, just within one sector, but they're located across different issues and across different policy sectors. Um, the advantage of, of, of this kind of overlapping um, perspective is that we don't have an artificial limitation of, 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 of what we actually look at if we want to understand policy making, but we try to take into account different, different sectors and we don't limit ourselves to sectoral borders. Um, and we can detect, more importantly, intersectoral trade-offs, um, mechanisms of diffusion, and synergies, obviously, if you um, want to understand how policy is made and how policy can, can be made. The most important research questions, there's, and, and there's, there's many of them, and, and, and many of them are quite simple, but they're, 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 they're open. Um, we, we should ask why and how these different issues and these different sectors are related. 
um, on a social level, but also on a, on a, on a, on a, on a resource level. How these, why, why do they actually, why do, would they need to be managed together? Um, and then, with respect to these actors in the center that are most, interest, mo most important for connecting the whole thing and for making trade-offs and, and, and synergies possible, we should try to identify them and, and know who they are, what resources they have, and what they actually make out of their position. So that was the, the first one. The second one is, is, is I'm, I'm talking about socio-ecological system. What you see here in this graph, again, it's, it's a network that looks nice. Um, the, the green ones, the green patches there, uh, let's imagine these are wetlands. Different wetlands um, on, a, on a map. And the red ones are, are actors that are making use of these wetlands. They're fishing, or they're, they're, they're using it as a, in their free time. They go there, they enjoy it, etc. Um, and what we're arguing here is that we're unable to say whether this governance structure, so the, 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 the red dots actually being connected and talking to each other and, and, and communicating and coordinating, we're unable to say if that's a good governance structure. If you don't look at the underlying resource structure, at, the, at, at how these different green patches are actually connected. And um, to take an example, if you look at on, on the, on the right-hand side, at this very simple example, the two red guys, they're, they're, they're using the same resource. Now, you probably prefer situation B, where they're actually talking together, to situation A, where um, they're just both using the same resource, but they're not coordinating. So in situation B, and this is a, it is a, a simplification of the whole thing, but we can go into these kind of, of, of complex networks of resource, um, of, of um, ecosystem or ecological resources and different types of actors and, and try how these um, networks fit together. So we need to take into account the governance and the resource system if you want to say something about, about management of water and, and, and other eco, um, resources. The advantages of such a systems perspe perspective is that we can, we can take into account different types of, 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 of ties between social actors and, uh, and, 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 and resources, as I mentioned before, use or, or, or actors might be responsible for regulation, etc. Um, and very different uh, resources or types of, of resources, depending on their structure and on their interdependencies between different patches and different parts of them, might actually require very different um, governance system. Just to to, 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 it's important to reflect on that. Um, and, and some of the key research questions that we, that we have to ask there is, what, what is a good fit between a governance system and a resource system? That's already kind of a tricky question. Um, it was pretty simple to, to, to look at these A and B situations. It's more or less clear that B is probably preferable to A. When it gets more complex, the question also, and the answer to this question becomes more complex, right? Um, and again, I think we should know where we should ask or examine, analyze which actors have the potential to, 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 to um, be responsible for an integrative type of resource uh, management. So which are the ones that can actually connect different parts of this network, or can, can, can connect different parts of the governance system and, uh, and make sure that there's some, at least some coordination. Right, um, I'm gonna move to the third one, the, again, Nice uh, little network there. This is the network of, of, of policy forums in Swiss water politics. Um, and, and, and actually, the Geneva Water Hub it it would be a con candidate to go in there. It's not in there because this is focusing on national politics. Um, but, and we weren't able to actually have a, 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 a list of, of members exactly. But we'll have to talk to you guys to integrate the, the, the Water Hub here. Um, so these policy forums are... are they, they have different names, platforms, boundary organizations, etc. where scientists come together with stakeholders, with, with, with people from the administration, with interest groups, with NGOs, etc., and they talk about specific issues. Um, they have been understudied, in, 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 and, and they're important for policymaking is not uh, acknowledged, because a lot of things are prepared there, a lot of evidence is prepared, a lot of um, networking happens in there. And, and they are connected. Again, you see... Um, so the policy forums are the, the big gray dots, and then the smaller gray dots are just their members that are just members in one of these forums. That's not very interesting, again, as, as with the issues. Um, what is more interesting are the guys in the middle, again, that connect these different forums, that deal with different aspects of water politics, 
Um, and they're, they're in here, they're in here, and, and so these are the central players that, that keep the, this structure together. You can see the, the BAFU, like the, 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 um, the Swiss environmental, uh, the Environment Agency, which is, which is a central player in this institutional structure of policy forums here. Um, so, it, it had always been argued that there's limitations to hierarchical um, traditional types of, of, of governing uh, you need horizontal, informal types of networks to include a broad set of actors. And these, these policy forums are actually uh, exactly doing that. So we should try to understand what they're, what, what they're doing. Um, the advantage of such a, of such a forum perspective, or, or taking these into account when we try to understand how policy is actually done, um, as I mentioned before, I'm repeating myself, that the need, there's a need for horizontal in, in interaction, and, and, and that's one way to do it. Um, and they can be an important part of the governance infrastructure. If you think at different institutions that are there to deal with, 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 with issues, these policy forums are an important part of that. Um, and the key research questions that we should ask there is, well, how actually, what, what's their internal functioning? It's often assumed that it's some kind of consensual, people are sitting together and talk and, and everybody loves each other and they find a nice solution. There's probably a lot of hierarchical and power games, etc., going on um, behind the scenes, right? So we should try to understand how actually these policy forums are working and what their role is in the overall um, institutional structure, in the overall governance system, because they are important parts. They're, they are connecting actors, um, and they're, they're, so they are an important part of, of where actors meet and actors talk to each other and they discuss solutions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, that was the last of these challenges, and I hope to give you some insight, how, uh, and some insight into how fancy these networks are if you look at them and how can, you can represent uh, stuff with it. Um, thank you. That was it.